FSN Radio. It's all about what's next. Go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com and sign up for your free weekly newsletter. You'll also get three free reports. The Financial Survival Network. It's all about what's next. Welcome. You are listening to the Financial Survival Network. I'm Kerry Lutz. Today is 32420. Well, coronavirus running rampant in New York City, around the country. How big a deal is it? Well, let's find out from Frank Vernuccio, who is in New York and can give us some idea of what's going on. Frank, always welcome. And so what's going on in New York City? Terry, it's great to be with you, um, even in this difficult time. Well, of course, around the world, we know that there have been 328,299 people infected, 14,376 have been killed. That, of course, is worldwide. New York City is a rather interesting situation. The mayor of New York City, um, uh, Bill de Blasio, de Blasio yes. greatly, greatly exacerbated the problem by refusing to close the schools until pretty much public pressure forced him to do so. That allowed this terrible virus to spread like wildfire throughout New York City. He's also, his administration was also caught rather flat-footed. They delayed until the last moment also ordering certain essential supplies. Now, in both of these cases, in the spread throughout New York City and the lack of supplies, in New York City, the mayor, of course, rather than acknowledge his own culpability, has been basically using his press conferences, his daily press conferences, as a sounding board to tell us how much he dislikes Donald Trump. Yeah, well, we know that this guy is a complete and total imbecile. He honeymooned in Havana. He's a total commie. He should be happy. The state's in, uh, expanding its reach, expanding its power. But this guy... He just doesn't get it. Even uh, while well, he was trying to do things and Cuomo overruled them, he was going to lock people down in their houses. They stopped that. But New York City seems to be the epicenter of the corona outbreak in the United States, doesn't it? Well, it certainly does. And isn't it interesting that uh, Mayor de Blasio's first impulse not to accept responsibility for closing the schools or not closing the schools, not ordering the supplies, but rather was a rather draconian authoritarian one. He wanted to close down New York City as a whole, basically to force people to stay within their homes, essentially imprisoning them. Now, here's the contradiction, Kerry. While the mayor wants to imprison people in their own homes, he also wants to let prisoners out of jails. He apparently is more worried about prisoners than he is about the regular people of New York City. The contradiction, of course, is that you're getting people out of a confined setting in the jails, uh, the criminals, but the honest honest people of New York City, he wants to confine them in their own homes. Tells you a lot about his political philosophy. You know, we can talk about honeymooning in Havana, but I think the real telling part about Mayor de Blasio's career was during the 1980s. When the Soviet Union was stationing war material in uh, Nicaragua, uh, particularly uh, fighter jets, Mayor de Blasio, then citizen de Blasio, cheering on the Soviet Union and opposing Ronald Reagan's move to get the Soviet Union's war material out of Central America. Yeah. Well, that was under the Monroe Doctrine, which appears to be obsolete now. Nobody cares about it, including the current occupant of the White House, or if he does care about it, he hasn't addressed it directly. But that's just one example. Uh, It's amazing that the police and the fire and the rescue people have not mutinied against de Blasio and gone to City Hall and just deposed him. Well, there almost was a mutiny uh, of one branch of city workers, and those were public school teachers. Uh, Before de Blasio finally gave the belated order to close the schools, the United Federation of Teachers had filed a lawsuit against him and were organizing a sick out. So the mayor actually was forced to close the schools because he could have kept them open, but no teachers would have shown up. And who can blame the teachers, right? So the teachers were mutinying against Comrade D and uh, then he finally and then he finally had to close the schools. And, you know, this type of of political grandstanding on the part of the left is is getting way out of hand. Just uh, yesterday, of course, um, uh, uh, Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell uh, blasted Democrats who stood in the way of legislation 
designed to get relief to the American people because they wanted to plaster it full of left wing programs totally unrelated to the COVID crisis. They wanted to put the Green New Deal aspects into it. They wanted to have regulations which would have changed the nature of unemployment insurance, things that had nothing to do with the COVID crisis, everything to do with the left-wing agenda, which indicates, I think, rather clearly that the left, the progressives, the Democrats care more about politics and their ideology than they do about the safety, the health, indeed the very lives of our fellow Americans. Yeah, and it shouldn't be used as a license to implement their political agenda, which is never going to fly. You know what could happen conceivably, uh, McConnell could conceivably uh, do the nuclear option now to blast the uh, Senate Democrats into oblivion. And then it'll just be Pelosi who will uh, have to take the hit. FSN Radio. It's all about what's next. Lumina Gold, ticker symbol, LUM on the Toronto Venture and LMGDF on the OTC is yet another of legendary mining investor Ross Beatty's Lumina Group. It's advancing the largest primary gold deposit in Ecuador. The resource is estimated to contain 16.7 million ounces of gold and 2.2 billion pounds of copper. At just $7 US per ounce gold equivalent, it trades at an incredible 13% of its net present value. More good news is on the way with an updated PEA study expected in Q2 of 2020. It has unparalleled infrastructure. There's grid power to camp with plentiful, inexpensive hydropower available. It's close to two ports and is just eight kilometers from a paved highway. Water is plentiful. It's at low elevation and the closest community, which is very supportive of Lumina's effort, is just a seven kilometer ride. With all this going for it, it's likely to follow the typical Ross Beatty formula, which means big returns to shareholders. Find out more and sign up for notifications at luminagold.com. That's lumina, L-U-M-I-N-A, gold.com. The Financial Survival Network. It's all about what's next. Well, that's exactly right. And of course, uh, one Democrat stood on the floor of the House, uh, I believe it was over the weekend, and said, when will we ever get an opportunity like this again to implement our agenda? Yeah, that's a great Uh, question. Never let a crisis go to waste, right? Yeah, it, it is a staggering point that the ideology of the left is that even the deaths of thousands of Americans and the potential deaths of thousands more could be seen as nothing more than an opportunity to pursue their ideological agenda. That's really disgusting, isn't it? It is. And you know, Kerry, the second thing we have to start looking at at some point is when will we punish China for its actions? You know, let's look at this as though we're a legal case. Mm. Um, We know that the Chinese knew, in fact, as far back as early November, that this was a serious issue. They decided not to tell the World Health Organization until December 31st that there was something going on in Wuhan City. But even in January, the Chinese Communist Party leadership was basically trying to hold back on any kind of information, even from their own people. Indeed, doctors and others who were noting what was going on in Wuhan were being called in for questioning, threatened and disappeared. Uh, This is really a heinous act on the part of the Chinese government. If this were a lawsuit, particularly since this is at least the second time, probably there's more, but at least the second time we know of, that the Chinese have attempted to cover up a disease outbreak and having, therefore, causing it to spread throughout the world, and they have escaped punishment. Something has to be done at this point. Yeah, and I think uh, it's in the offing. It's going to happen. Now is not the appropriate time. We need to get this thing under control. We still need some stuff from China. We don't want to have a total break with them, but I think that's going to be the inevitable result. And I think you'll see many countries in the world refusing to trade with them, embargoing their products and their services, and just saying goodbye. And I think other things have to come into play fairly quickly as well. It is inappropriate to have a nation that spreads disease throughout the world because of its own malfeasance or negligence, that has been aggressive towards its own neighbors in its, in its border area, uh, and that has become a military superpower when it's facing no real threat. For a nation like that to sit on the United Nations Security Council is wholly inappropriate, and I believe the time has come when the United States must insist that it will not recognize any Chinese votes on the UN Security Council. 
Mm. Uh, if that's the demise of the UN, then so be it. Uh, I think the whole concept of globalism, all of the wonderful things it's going to do for us, I think that's that myth, that lie has been put to rest. Now we can get on with the, what the real world is. And Kerry, part of the problem of all that, of course, that whole globalization concept, and the reason it has not been good for Americans, is it never was really a level playing field. I believe strongly in free trade and unrestricted trade. But what we've seen from China is not free trade. It's basically been unilateral disarmament on the part of many Western nations, as China has stolen intellectual property rights, as it's stolen technology, as it has restricted trade from the West to the interior of China. They have been free to open up to to use our markets and to uh, do whatever they want on our shores. That's not free trade. Again, that's unilateral disarmament. Totally. So anyway, well, we're going to have to get through this now. Global financial collapse pandemic. The pandemic's the least of it. Far more people are going to die, Frank, from the resulting financial collapse than would have ever died from the Wuhan virus, the Chinese virus, if you will. And that's just the way it is. Anyway, Frank, if we want to find out more about you, connect with you on the web, where do we go? USAGovPolicy.com. And thanks for asking, Kerry. All right. And uh, there'll be a link to it, as always, in the show notes to this interview. Check out our site, FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com. Send us emails, kl at kerrylutz.com. Frank, so much, thank you so much for coming on. Kerry, I look forward to our next discussion. FSN Radio. It's all about what's next. Go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com and sign up for your free weekly newsletter. You'll also get three free reports. The Financial Survival Network. It's all about what's next.